Number 8. Lowland Mummy In 1978, a researcher was searching for ancient settlements in China when he uncovered a mummy in the Tarim Basin. But this wasn't any ordinary mummy, and it wasn't the only one found there. Over time, more than 100 mummies have been discovered in four different areas of the basin, and there's something about them that stumped experts. Some of the mummies date back to over 4,000 years ago, when Westerners weren't believed to have visited the foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains. Adding to the mystery, many of the mummies were clothed and buried in a way that was more common in European countries than in China. But the most surprising thing about the mummies is that they're all Caucasian, with red or blonde hair, similar to the traders described in writings from Pliny the Elder as being tall with flaxen hair and blue eyes. Could these mummies belong to the people described in his ancient texts? All of the bodies are remarkably well preserved, even better preserved than some ancient Egyptian mummies. So did the embalmer have a secret that helped keep the bodies looking like they'd only just been buried despite being placed there thousands of years ago? Experts think the area where they were laid to rest is what kept the mummies looking so lifelike, especially considering they weren't actually embalmed but naturally preserved. The site is on the edge of the Taklamakan Desert, whose hot climate and rocky soil helped to naturally embalm the bodies, even though they should have decomposed hundreds of years ago. Many of the mummies were also dressed in elaborate clothes, items that were not customary as clothing in China. One had a red tunic with gold embroidery and a lavish gold foil burial mask. Others that were found wearing large black pointed hats have been nicknamed the Witches of Tsubeshi for their close resemblance to historical accounts of European witches. But it's the remarkable preservation that has stunned experts, and Lulin, a female mummy who died on the Silk Road trade route that linked China with the West, who has captured the attention of historians. Nicknamed the Lulin Beauty, her features were so well preserved, she still looked beautiful, even in death. But it was difficult for experts to study Lulin and other mummies. Controversy erupted when experts wanted to recover the bodies. Local members of the Uyghur people claimed to be their descendants and didn't want their ancestors disturbed. But experts were able to collect genetic material to reveal the true identity of the mummies. They ended up having DNA that tied them to Europeans, most likely Siberians, as well as people from Mesopotamia and Europe. As experts continued to piece together Lulin's story, they pinpointed her to be around 40 to 45 years old at the time of her death. They also believe she died from inhaling massive amounts of pollution from open fires and sand in the air. Despite her sad end, she was well clothed, leading experts to conclude that she and many of the other mummies were textile merchants who were buried with the very goods they'd traveled along the Silk Road to sell to the Chinese. Even though some scholars teach that many ancient cultures didn't travel far from home and stayed with their own people, the discovery of Lulin and the other mummies shows how many cultures explored the world and traveled further than previously thought. Number 7. The Mysterious Yan Kingdom The discovery of a significant number of artifacts at a site near Beijing has provided archaeologists a glimpse into the lives of an ancient kingdom that once ruled China. In 2019, the site was excavated to reveal earthen city walls, human remains, and vast burial areas that are more than 3,000 years old. Five ancient tombs were among the sites unearthed, and inside, experts found more than 100 ancient relics, including seashells, pottery, ivory objects, and silks. Some of the earliest known human beings, later rising into a superpower that ruled China, inhabited the area around Beijing in prehistoric times. But it's the discovery of a bronze wine vessel that might be the clue experts need to uncover the story of the Yan Kingdom. Experts think the words inscribed on the sides of the vessel are a testimonial of Beijing's construction history stretching back more than 3,000 years. The priceless artifacts were almost lost to the elements when flooding decades ago threatened to destroy the site and its secrets. Fortunately, they survived, leading to a wealth of knowledge and further mystery. 
Experts believe that the relic site was the capital of the Yan Kingdom during the Western Zhao Dynasty from 1046 to 771 BC. It was one of the largest regional states, one that saw Beijing as its capital for eight centuries, and today it stands as one of the oldest inhabited areas in the world. Over time, Beijing has seen so many changes. It has had a number of different names over its history, including Dadu and Beiping, before settling on its current and 16th name of Beijing. With seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites located there, it's clear to see how the city that started as a miter settlement grew into one of the world's biggest cultural powerhouses. The city boasts the Great Wall, the longest defensive wall in the world, the Forbidden City, the largest and best preserved imperial palace in the world, and Temple of Heaven, one of the holiest of imperial temples in China. But not a lot is known about its original ruling dynasty, founded by the Duke of Xiao, and that's because many of the records through the first nine generations after the death of the Duke were destroyed. With the personal names of most rulers of Yan unknown, discoveries like the artifacts at the relic site in Beijing are important pieces that will help unravel the mystery of this ancient dynasty. Number 6. Mayan Blueprint What's lurking under the landscape of modern-day Mexico might surprise you. Anthropologists are thrilled to have discovered hundreds of ancient ceremonial sites that once belonged to the Maya civilization. Almost 500 of these complexes have been found using LiDAR, a laser system that surveys the land from the air to detect three-dimensional structures buried beneath plants and trees. One of the massive structures, Aguada Phoenix, stretches for almost a mile and is one one of the largest, oldest, ancient Mayan structures ever found. Researchers think it dates to around 10,000 to 800 BCE, and stunningly, it has been hiding in plain sight all this time. The modern-day Mexicans living on top of the complex without even knowing it. Even though it stretches almost 4,600 feet, it is a flat area, which could be why locals didn't even realize what was right beneath their feet or the historical significance of the vast complex. Among the structures, there are nine wide causeways that extend from a massive rectangular platform, as well as other smaller complexes and artificial water reservoirs. Even though many other similar structures exist across the ancient Mayan world, this one is different. Other nearby complexes that were once home to the Olmec people, the first major civilization in Mexico, had stone sculptures of people, which experts say showed that they had a hierarchy where people of higher status had more power. At Aguada Phoenix, there's only been one stone statue found, and it was of an animal. As experts continue to study the LiDAR images, they do see similarities to these structures and those found in other ancient Olmec cities. They all seem to have a similar structure to the one found at Aguada Phoenix, with one main rectangular plaza flanked by edge platforms. By comparing the data from this and other sites, experts now see a direct connection between Mesoamerican cultures who lived at different times and passed down their influences to build their most important ceremonial sites. It offers a unique blueprint that can help archaeologists as they continue to seek out hidden mysteries of the Maya that are still waiting to be discovered. Have you ever visited any ancient Mayan ruins? If you have, share your experience in the comments section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. Number 5. The Dashka Stone when a Russian professor discovered an ancient stone slab in the South Ural Mountains in 1999, he didn't realize his find would be so controversial. It all started when Alexander Chuvrov, a professor of mathematics and physics, came across a report detailing 200 white stone slabs initially uncovered in the 18th century. Chuvrov was determined to find the slabs and he set out an expedition, but it was a tip from a local resident who had a stone in his garden that sounded suspiciously like those in the 18th century archives that really put the professor on the right track. When Chuvrov visited the home of the villager, he was stunned to find a stone tablet measuring 58 inches high and 41 inches wide, with strange lines that he soon realized was a map of the nearby Ural Mountains. As Chuvrov studied the Dashka stone, nicknamed after his granddaughter, he soon realized the strange markings were in fact a map written in an unknown language. Even stranger, they were a three-dimensional representation of 
specific parts of the nearby Ural Mountains. It included dams, irrigation canals, and other features that could only be seen by air. Ancient seashells embedded in the stone made its age somewhat easier to determine, with one shell at least 500 million years old and another around 120 million years old. Three local rivers were also shown on the map, leading experts to believe it was created as a navigation tool. Modern researchers have compared the map to modern computerized military maps. Its striking similarity makes the Dashka Stone one of the most controversial discoveries in Russia, one that is ancient but that seems to have been created with knowledge that was far ahead of its time. One of its nicknames is Map the Creator, but who the map's creator was or how he or she was able to create such a detailed three-dimensional map is a mystery that researchers will continue to try and solve. How do you think the map was created? Feel free to share your theories in the comments. Number four, Aphrodite Temple. A mysterious inscription on an ancient temple was the first clue that Turkish researchers had stumbled across something important. Located on the Erla Çeşme Peninsula, the structure would end up being identified as one used by cult followers of the ancient Greek goddess Aphrodite. Experts found an inscription on the building reading, This is a sacred place giving them the first clue that they had discovered something special. Only when the research team uncovered a statue of a woman and terracotta female head did they realize what they'd located. The ruins of the 5th century BC temple are evidence that at one time, a cult to the goddess of the sea, fertility, beauty, and love was worshipped in the region. Like many other Greek deities, there are multiple origin stories for Aphrodite. One story says she was born from the sea foam after the titan Crotus killed his father Uranus and threw his genitals into the sea. But Homer believed Aphrodite was the daughter of Zeus and Dione, a consort to Zeus. Aphrodite was also known to have many lovers, including Ares, who was the Greek god of war, and Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Maybe her many lovers is why prostitutes in ancient Greece considered her their patron saint. The temple was originally discovered in 2016, but at that time, experts also found tumuli. Ancient burial mounds where notable people of society were located. Nearby, they also found caves which were also used as sacred areas by Greeks who moved into the area around 8000 BC for its proximity to the sea, bringing with them their customs, traditions, and devotion to their ancient goddess. Number 3 Ancient Viking Stone For more than 100 years, the inscriptions on an ancient Viking stone have baffled scientists. More than 700 inscriptions on the 8-foot-high rock rune stone are believed to be the first examples of written literature in Sweden. But there's just one problem they're encoded. Now, a select group of codebreakers think they have cracked the mystery of what's written on the ancient tablet. It wasn't as easy as simply figuring out the code and translating the text. The inscriptions are written in riddles, so not only does one have to be able to decode the symbols, they also have to know a little bit about a type of Old Norse poetry. Known as skaldic poetry, the verses are written with elaborate descriptions to describe scenes. The inscriptions are also written in partial ciphers with runes or symbols that stand for several letters of the alphabet. With such an elaborate method needed to decipher the message, experts have believed for years that the text must describe ancient battles of the warrior culture. Instead, the group who now claim to have deciphered the text think the poem describes the Vikings' warnings of a climate disaster that struck the Americas in 536 to 47 AD. But could the ancient Vikings really have carved the stone with a warning of something that happened halfway across the world? Maybe so. Volcanic eruptions blanketed the skies with thick ash blocking out the sun, abruptly cooling temperatures in the northern hemisphere and disturbing entire ecosystems, including those in Sweden where the stone was found. The damage was so bad that nearly half the population of Scandinavia died. Even though the stone wasn't carved until hundreds of years after the event, it's obvious that the impact left its mark on the Vikings so much that they carved the rock rune stone for future generations to heed their warning. 
So how did experts crack the code of the rock rune stone? By combining archaeology, history, and runology, they were able to unlock the inscription. Deciphering the riddles is proving to be more of a challenge though. One look at one of the many verses makes it clear that it will take some ingenuity to figure out what the Vikings meant. The first describes the retelling of the Viking apocalypse known as Ragnarok. In the story, a giant wolf swallows the sun, which turns the sky red and the sun black. Some scholars think it could be an artistic retelling of how the skies looked after the volcanic eruption in America, and how its effects could be felt in Sweden. Whether the tablets describe a mythological occurrence or are an artistic interpretation of real things that happened at the time the Vikings created them, the discovery of the rock rune stone and its mysterious carvings continues to keep scholars hunting for clues to their purpose. Number 2. Istanbul Train Station Treasures Haider Pasha train station is a main travel hub for visitors and commuters in Istanbul. Over the last three years, excavations have unearthed many exciting new discoveries, ones with ties to ancient times and some connected to the not-so-distant past. Recent excavations have revealed items with ties to World War II, including concrete platforms and a 1,312-foot-long bunker built in 1942 unearthed at the 74-acre facility. Ancient mass graves with 28 bodies and a mausoleum were also discovered inside a section of St. Basa Church, an important ruin from the Byzantine era. More remarkable finds, including the ruins from a holy spring, a stone brick workshop with a furnace and pots that date back to the 5th and 6th centuries AD, as well as 12,000 gold, silver, and bronze coins from the 5th century BC were also found. The further researchers dig, the more history they seem to unearth. Traces of the Hellenistic, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman periods have been found in all layers of the earth. With only 50% of all planned excavations completed, locals are getting anxious for work to be completed. But with archaeologists, art historians, and conservationists working to remove every important artifact so they aren't damaged, it's gonna take some time. By the time they're finished, all of the remarkable treasures will be showcased at a planned archaeological park, spotlighting how varied the discoveries are and celebrating decades of history at the site. Number 1. Ancient Quarry in Sculpture Workshop in 1890, an explorer named Felix von Lucien found a basalt quarry and stone sculptures in the southern Gaziantep province of Turkey. This discovery was just the tip of the iceberg, at a place where new discoveries continue to thrill archaeologists to this day. Initial excavations between 1958 and 1961 revealed 300 finished or partially completed stone sculptures including lions, sphinx, and mountain gods. As experts surveyed the remarkable finds, they realized they'd uncovered a stone sculpture workshop now known as Yesemek, the largest stone quarry and statue processing worksite of the Near East. Experts think it was a hub of activity between the 4th quarter of the 2000 BC and 8th century BC. Between 1375 and 133 BC, the area was ruled by the Hittites, an ancient group of Indo-Europeans who moved into Asia Minor and formed an empire at modern-day Turkey. During that time, the site was home to all phases of the sculpting process. Stones were cut from the quarry and transported for preparation, where masons sketched and carved their statues. Some of the sketches are still visible on the unfinished pieces today, giving insight into the master masons and their creative process that has stood the test of time. The artisans combined various styles in their handiwork, including influences from Hittite, Syrian, and Assyrian elements to create what is now known as Orientalism. Nearly 300 sketches and statues are on display in a unique open-air museum at the site. Among the artworks there are sphinxes and war scene reliefs, with many of the other statues depicting gate lions, sitting lions, and winged lions, popular motifs in local culture. As recently as 2021, new statues were still being unearthed at Yesemek, the largest and oldest sculpture workshop in the region. One that is a testament to the lasting artistry of some of the area's first sculptors. Thanks for watching. 
Which one of these mysterious discoveries fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.